In this module of Chapter 9, I cover the concept and application of survival curve analysis. French demographer Jean-Marie Robin and his colleagues introduced the concept of three dimensions of the survival curve. First, horizontalization, which corresponds to how long a cohort and how many survivors can live before aging-related deaths significantly decrease the proportion of survivors. Second, verticalization, which corresponds to how concentrated aging-related deaths are around the modal age of death. And third, longevity extension, which corresponds to how far the highest normal life durations can exceed the modal age of death. These measures were developed primarily for characterizing historical changes in the degree of rectangularization, that is to say, squaring the curve, of human survival. One of the major differences between longevity databases for humans versus those for non-human species is size. Whereas there are typically records for tens or hundreds or thousands of deaths by age and sex for humans, the longevity records involving studies of non-human species often are in the range of a few score, say for primates, a few hundred for rodents, or a few thousand for insects or worms. Although a modal age of death can be computed with any data set, a statistically significant modal age is only identifiable for data sets containing deaths of a few thousand individuals. This is especially true for the use of the captive cohort method, where the sample sizes involve a few score or a few hundred individuals. Given this constraint on estimating the modal ages for the death distribution for small data sets from captive cohort studies, my colleagues and I introduced a simplified approach here that is based on the slope of the survival curve at early, middle, and advanced ages. I will start with a concept presented in this figure showing a stylized survival curve in which three slopes are computed using regression methods, including horizontalization, that is the slope between age 0 and Lx equal uh, 0.9, that is 10% dead. Second, verticalization, that is survival slope between Lx equal 0.9 and Lx equal 0.1. And third, longevity extension, the survival slope between Lx equal 0.1 and the age of the last individual to die, that is when x equal omega. So let SH SB and SLE denote the slopes of the straight lines defining horizontalization, verticalization, and longevity extension, uh, respectively, shown here. Simple algebra yields slopes where A, B, C denote survival at birth, survival to ages 10% uh, and 90% are dead, respectively, and D is the age of the oldest individual. For example, using data from MedFly post-capture survival curves in July and September, we can compare these three dimensions across the two capture periods. Horizontalization, the rate of decline for this component of the survival curves, was over twofold greater in the July captures relative to those captured in August. Whereas the first 10% of deaths occurred after two weeks for the July MedFly cohorts, it occurred after around a month for the September captures, i.e. twice as long. For verticalization, there was nearly a 1.5-fold difference in the slopes of the post-capture survival curves between July versus in September captures. The period that elapsed from 90% alive to 10% alive was 58 and 75 days for the July and September captures, respectively. For longevity extension, the tails of the survival curves for medflies captured on the two sampling dates were very similar with slopes similar to nearly uh, four decimal places and the durations differing by only three days, i.e. 34 for July captures versus 38 days for September captures. So with this example, I end this module number eight of chapter nine in biodemography.